Hello and welcome back to this Down for the Idealistic Crusade. This video will be a short video. Uh, after reading a particular discussion on the Blu-ray.com forum, it brought back an old uh, video issue to mind, so I figured I'd make a video on it. And that is the sad state of Terminator 2, not to mention every practically every other James Cameron film in his back catalog on, and it's a uh, sorry state on home video. T2 is a special case because there are, you know, crap tons of releases really you know dozens of releases multiple different cuts not just the theatrical and the special edition to worry about but now other home video uh, edition cuts that tack on an extra scene or two here and there but as with most every other Cameron film uh, it has been subjected to uh, a massive amount of tinkering in the years since its release multiple versions multiple new video masters and the current you know technically best available release that people will try and sell you frequently is the absolutely horrendous 4k uhd release which actually uses the uh, conversion for 3d that was released in theaters and hit with a crap ton of digital noise reduction to make it look like a wax face grainless mess addition in in addition with a brand new color timing and brand new audio mix, which is still not the original sound design. That is just compounded problems. So that is without doubt, I think, the worst uh, 4K UHD title on the market and is completely inadvisable unless you're a complete T2 fanatic or you're okay with what they did and you just want it on UHD, which is understandable. And they sell it for so cheap uh, that you know I can understand people buying it. But I wanted to throw this together with the... Uh, just go over the additions I've picked up over the years to try and have every extra and compile like the best T2 archive, which you also have to do a little bit with the first film, and that's why I've got multiple copies of the original Terminator. Uh, I myself prefer the original, but T2 is still a good solid sequel. It is one of the great sequels and has it was a, a groundbreaking film in many different ways, not just the special effects, but the sound design, uh, its action set pieces, not to mention its budget as well, which was insane massive for the time in 1991 but uh, there are a number of factors that I think most people are not aware of and a number of video releases that I think are very important to at least know about if not own so I wanted to go over these very quickly this is just a very rough rambling type of video where I'm going to go over my various copies of T2 and explain why I have multiples even though I prefer the first film and uh, which version I think is the one you should grab which is very inexpensive pretty much all of these are and uh, which version I think is necessary to have as a supplemental disc in terms of extras and also the one that I think is essential simply for its soundtrack alone so to start I think the easiest thing to do would be to just go chronologically and go back to ye old days of video in 1991, 1992 to see how T2 sort of started and then how the home video machine kept it going over the years and various repackagings, reissues, and so on and so forth. So to go back to the beginning, and this is actually important for a couple different reasons, all we had was the theatrical cut, which got released on VHS and Laserdisc. On LD, we got the deluxe box set here with the film in CAV, so it's a full-on box with the typical lift box type lid. But this also includes the making up documentary, which has been ported over and has its own particular transfer. The audio is 2.0 matrixed PCM, Dolby Surround. It seems to be probably what you would have heard on the uh, Dolby Stereo track. If you saw this film on the original release in 35 millimeter, you would have heard it in Dolby Stereo SR, and that seems to be replicated here. Again, I can only guess, but it's a really nice potent mix even though it isn't discreet and I really like the way it sounds. It sounds different to the special edition mix which was a special job done for the home release. Uh, again this does include the documentary. It has some text slides and extras. I also really like the transfer on this. I do think it is a sharper better looking transfer than the special edition. Should be because it is full CAV. It will mean that you do have to flip sides a lot more but I do like the uh, inclusion of this, this is my favorite part of any of the LD packages, and it was reprinted in some of the later ones, but it first appeared here, the printed letter from James Cameron talking about uh, how they strove to get T2 looking as good as it possibly could on LD and in the best possible video format at the time of release, and a little bit of technical notes. 
you know, explaining the scope aspect ratio. Later on, they would do opened up versions in the custom pan and scan that Cameron liked to name it. Uh, that would uh, use more of the Super 35 uh, format stock, but of course that is not the intended scope ratio. So that's explained here. And then uh, my favorite part is, of course, on all of these copies of this letter, it simply says, enjoy, and don't forget to, in all caps, crank it up. This is my favorite Cameron thing ever. This little goofy letter in all the T2 laser discs. So I've always really liked this. And of course you do have the promo still of Arnie on the bike on this nice included uh, photo stock insert. It does include a nice booklet with the chapter stops and I do prefer the poster artwork and so because of that they very nicely reproduced that. So this is what the standard release looks like which we'll get to in a second. So you've got that reproduced in the actual book, so you don't lose out on having the awesome poster artwork. And then unlike that, because it is full CAV, as you can see, the film itself is spread over multiple sides. Then the final part is all about the making of documentary. Of course, same for the back. So this is the same exact transfer that you're going to get on the standalone version, but you get the benefit of the full CAV presentation. You get really nice custom sleeves with the logo. They're polylined, so if you find this, the disc should be in really nice shape. Uh, the sleeves, probably not so much because they're, they are a little flimsy. They're not, you know, thick stock, so they will be crinkled a little bit, but this is held up really well. This is much less uh, common than the special edition box. Uh, you don't see these all the time, so if you are looking for one of these, you will have to scrutinize. It will probably take you a while, and most of these, as you can see, have some wear, and because it's a lot of discs in a box set, most often the corners are going to have a lot of wear or be split. Thankfully, this one isn't, but it's got some definite wear. Um, also, I should mention the T2 logo is actually embossed on here very nicely. So if you want the theatrical version on Laserdisc and you want the making of documentary, this is the one you want to find. But of course, do keep in mind, it only has a PCM Dolby Stereo Matrix soundtrack. It does not have 5.1. Uh, again, I do think the transfer on here of the U.S. releases is probably the best overall. Um, if I had to choose, I like some of the stuff in the special editions. I don't really watch the theatrical cut all that often, um, it, at least in this particular version. But again, I do think this looks better than the special edition versions. And again, it's full CAV, so it does have that little uptick in picture quality. As I mentioned before, the standard version is exactly the same, but it's CLV, so it's only two discs. You don't get the making of documentary. It has the same art, but this is just, this is how you want your copy of T2 to look. So uh, this is also ultra common. Uh, you can find this and you should not pay more than a dollar or two for it. I think this one cost me a whole 50 cents and I only got it simply because the cover was perfect and it was 50 cents. I mean, this one is, is pretty much immaculate, but as you can see, it pretty much replicates everything in its entirety. The only difference is because it's CLV, it's only three sides, and it doesn't have all the extras. Um, again, same transfer as the box set, but uh, do keep in mind you miss all the swag, you don't get the documentary, and you don't get the fancy box. But uh, if you just want a version of T2 on LD and you like the theatrical cut, this one is the one you're gonna see everywhere. Do make sure you get the widescreen version. The standard one has the same cover. Uh, it's the same in every other way, but it, it doesn't have the banner on the top. But of course, if you like the 4 to 3 alternate version, that's also a good reason to pick up that copy as well. Uh, this has the same Dolby Stereo Matrix PCM 2.0 mix, which should be uh, a perfect replication of the 1991 standard release audio that everybody else heard. Uh, but again, that's just my educated guess. It does sound different to the special edition mix and still sounds really good for its time and what it is. And now it's time to move on to the special edition and one of the great behemoths of Laserdisc packaging, one of the great la Laserdisc box sets. This is something that's in everybody's collection. Collection. Everybody has it sooner or later, and it's still one of the best packages in home video history. I'm, of course, talking about the big old T2 special edition box set. This is in its full faux leather slipcase with the actual metallic plate 
for the T2 Special Edition logo. This, of course, hat came in a number of color variations. Uh, I think gold is the most common, uh, but there's also silver, blue, and red. I think red is the most difficult one to find. Um, as with any T2, there's always variations somewhere. So, of course, the box itself would originally had a hype sticker, but you slip the actual case out, and this is where it gets fun. So, first of all, the spine is absolutely fantastic flip it over so you can see but then you get the two halves so you get arnie and a nice promo shot and then i've always loved the logo peeking out of the little cutout notch in the box and the flip side is the actual skeleton skull in flames and on this really it's it's not just glossy, but this whole inner slipcase box is like a really thick gloss. It's a very heavy premium product, which it just literally, you can feel it when you pull it out. So of course we get the insert with the new art, and this is what was used for the standalone version of this. So uh, th th that's why if you've seen this before, that is the common standalone version of the special edition box. And then, of course, just like the theatrical cut box, we get a fold out. What I really like about this is it identifies all the editions. Just, so just like the Abyss box set and other Cameron films, all the editions are specifically noted. And, of course, they talk about missing frames and reinserting things, so on and so forth. Um, so that's on the first panel. Then your second panel is your chapter stops. And then third is about the restoration, the THX mastering process, and how this laser disc was produced. And then in, a, in another nice touch, the interior panel is another letter from James Cameron. This one asking, answering the question, why make a special edition? And of course, has the printed signature on there. I must admit, I've always really enjoyed that about the uh, Cameron film releases on Laserdisc and the special edition box sets. Even though I'm not really a James Cameron fan, it's just something that helps make the Laserdisc in, in particular really special. It's definitely not something you see on Blu-ray releases. Oh, a letter from the director, you know, signed and directly to you, the purchaser of said disc. Then the actual discs themselves, again, are in custom sleeves, but here they are custom actual jackets and, you know, identifying, you know, disc one, disc two, disc three. Unfortunately, the film is not in CAV. It's CLV, um, unlike the theatrical cut box. So that's another reason why I think the theatrical cut box set version actually looks better than the special edition. However, the special edition has a brand new custom created Dolby Surround PCM mix, which is uh, was apparently overseen by Gary Rydstrom, the original sound designer, and it's um, punchier than the theatrical cut audio on the uh, theatrical cut box. It, it sounds really nice, actually. It's still probably my favorite sounding version of the special edition. So even though it's not discreet, um, it's still a heck of a fun track. There, I mean, the, even the later remixes of T2, they, they keep changing stuff and adding stuff, but you still can't quite make it sound bad. Uh, it, you just make it sound different. But I do think uh, this is when the era of home remixes were really trying to improve upon what was possible in the Dolby Surround Matrix era of home video. So I really think this is very much akin to the Star Wars Definitive Collection box set remastered audio that made brand new Dolby Surround tracks from the original sources and tried to make them as accurate and as lack of a better term, boom-tastic as possible uh, without, you know, really changing anything that uh, affected the film itself. So it's not theatrically 100% accurate, but it's pretty close, and it's very lively to this day. Then on uh, this disc, on side four, the beginning of the supplemental section happens. So this is basically a brand new making of with uh, tons of textiles and slides and things, and it continues on to disc three, which is two-sided. All the supplements, I should say, are CAV encoded. So the film's CLV, but the extras are CAV. So here's disc three, again, matching. And also, once this ends, we get into a bit about the transfer, a bit about the restoration, the omitted scenes that were not included, uh, the publicity, we get the trailer gallery, and then we also get 
the Guns N' Roses music video. So that's what makes this uh, a release to want to own to if you're trying to have every single extra because this is where the infamous Guns N' Roses music video that was dropped uh, is included. That's the big draw for this because most of this other stuff has been replicated on later releases. But if you want everything and if you want the Guns N' Roses music video on disc, this is still the, the way to go about it. And I know there are, it's floating around online and other people have, I think it's been uploaded to YouTube before. I don't know if it's still floating around. But um, if you want it on disc, this is the way you want to do it. So in short, in terms of the LD boxes, the uh, original CAB theatrical cut, I think, has the best picture overall in terms of all the early releases on Laserdisc and has the seemingly theatrical audio from the standard 35 millimeter release, whereas the special edition box gets you the new cut with the new home remix, Scary Rydstone over Super, I should say Supervised, uh, plus the additional extras and the Guns N' Roses music video. So I think it is nice to have both, especially if you're a Laserdisc collector or a T2 fan. Um, both will set you back a little bit because they are heavy and more expensive to ship, um, but you shouldn't have to pay too terribly much. There are, unfortunately, some people who will uh, definitely inflate prices because it's T2 and it's a big LD box, but I will say the theatrical box is a lot harder to find complete uh, over the uh, special edition box, and I just so happen to have, somebody sent me as a gift once, the uh, another of the boxes so this is the same set but in the blue front plate as you can see like most of these it does have some areas where it is peeling uh, the contents are exactly the same but it's just the front has a different color again there are four and it seems the red one is the hardest one to find um, a lot of people will charge more for the various colors but again the actual box contents are the same so don't worry if you get one over another so then we move on to the standard letterbox version of the special edition so here's that image again this is also super common just like the theatrical cut disc uh, this one you shouldn't have to pay more than a buck or two for uh, this was actually the first version I owned on LD, and I've held on to it simply because it's just the other version. It's easier to pull off the shelf than the box at sometimes. Uh, this is CLV two discs, so ironically, this is exactly the same as the uh, movie disc inside the box set. So that's one of the reasons why when you get the box, it's a little disappointing because it's not CAV and the uh, movie is identical to this standalone release. And also, they condensed everything down into a custom gatefold. So first you get another copy of the James Cameron letter, but this is sort of combining the letter from the theatrical box with the updated version in the special edition box that's printed. So here you get it like this. So... That's another version of this letter. And then probably best overall, the gatefold incorporates all the information about the cut scenes and which chapters uh, you f you'll find them. So here, along the edges, as you can see, you have the information about the cut scenes with the chapter information there on the bottom. Beautiful wraparound photo, which is perfectly appropriate. And then the rest of them are here on the second panel. And then you get nice art on the reverse. So basically this summarizes the big special edition box plus a copy of the Cameron letter. It looks really nice. It is dirt cheap, so there's really no reason to not have a version of this and the theatrical disc uh, if you don't want the box sets um, or if you just want standard copies. Because these are so cheap and so common, you can get them for about you know a dollar or so each or less uh, from you know good sellers or stores that don't mark up their discs. Um, so if you're a collector of laser discs or you're a Terminator fan and you just want display pieces, there's really no reason to not have copies of these because they are that common. And again, this replicates the uh, box set transfer and audio completely because the discs are identical. Again, there is also a 4 to 3 version of this particular transfer floating around, so it will have this same art, just without the widescreen banner on top. I would like to find one someday because I have collected some of the other uh, Cameron 4 to 3 variants like True Lies and The Abyss, uh, but of course, like those, the uh, 4 to 3 versions are much less common because I guess they were printed in uh, much smaller quantities, but you can find it out there uh, for both the theatrical and the special edition version.
Now, do keep in mind this is not comprehensive. There are many more T2s out there. A lot of Laserdisc fans and other Terminator fans really like some of the rare uh, Japanese versions on Laserdisc, of which there are many. Uh, in particular, there are some late releases. There is a squeeze anamorphic Japanese version as well. And by squeeze, I mean it is literally a 16.9 encoded anamorphic image, just like a DVD encoded onto a laser disc. This was shortly lived in Japan, and all these discs are thus very rare. Uh, there were a handful of promo discs made in the U.S., not Terminator 2, of course, uh, but that means you can actually display them on a 16x9 display device, and they're not going to be pillar boxed because they're not 4.3. They're actually 16.9. Uh, they were designed for early 16x9 televisions that didn't quite take off at the time. Uh, that's its own particular version, but again, it usually is very expensive. Um, there are uh, several others which I've never quite gotten into, and the transfers and audio sort of vary. Some are based around the U.S. releases, some are their own thing, and there are also different European masters as well. So if you want to go down further the rabbit in the rabbit hole, you can by all means, but it's going to be a very time-consuming and expensive process. So I'm sticking primarily with the U.S. versions because uh, these are what I have. It's what I'm experienced with. But there are, of course, other versions out there. Now, uh, the final release on Laserdisc was in 1998, so that means it's a very late release, and it does have AC3 5.1. Uh, I've never been able to get a copy because it's very rare and usually goes for quite a bit when it does pop up. But it is the theatrical cut. It's the movie only. Uh, it has both Matrix 2.0, PCM, and 5.1 Dolby Digital AC3. However, the importance of this release is not only is it possibly the best looking U.S. disc, I don't know because I've never been able to uh, look at a copy because I don't own it, um, you know, they, obviously it would probably be best overall because it's a new transfer and it's a late release LD compared to discs from the beginning of the decade. But also, uh, the 5.1 is actually the theatrical CDS mix. And by CDS, I mean cinema digital sound. It was a very short lived process. It was a 5.1 system that actually encoded a digital PCM of, I should say, full bitrate PCM at CD quality in terms of of the 5.1 characteristics itself. It was encoded onto the film print, but unfortunately there was no space or ability to have a backup audio track in case anything failed. So that meant when problems happened, which they did naturally, including I think a premiere event of T2 um, of the 70 millimeter version, uh, that's why CDS was quickly discontinued. And of course, Dolby was already working on their own system, which would be the AC3 standard. And then shortly after that, which Dolby premiered theirs in 1992, and DTS came around in 1993, Sony had their own system, SDDS, and we were off to the digital format wars in terms of sound uh, competing formats. So CDS was right before this, and it's only a handful of films like Days of Thunder, The Doors, uh, Dick Tracy, T2, Edward Scissorhands. Um, again, it was it's very few films, and most were only uh, four-channel mixes, like 4.0 or 4.1. So only a very few were actually 5.1, like uh, Dick Tracy and Terminator 2. And they are very innovative in their sound design, so they're extremely important in the advancement of uh, usage of discrete surrounds and stereo imaging. And T2, I think, is the most important of these because it's the most aggressive and uh, a really incredible mix that pushes the art of sound mixing forward, uh, much like what would happen two years later with the theatrical release of Jurassic Park as the premier film in the new DTS system. So to have that CDS mix on disc is very important for the theatrical cut. And so the fact that the Laserdisc has it is, is really great that we have an ability to enjoy it. However, that is very rare, usually is quite pricey if and when it does pop up. But for the initial DVD release, right around the same time, uh, Artisan, and who would eventually become Lionsgate, of course, uh, decided to make a quickie DVD port of that Laserdisc Master. There are a couple versions of this in both Snapper and Keep case, but it looks like this. So uh, this version is the first DVD release. It is the theatrical cut only. It doesn't really have the wealth of extras that was on the uh, box set releases. However, it does have a good deal of information in terms of old-fashioned DVD text menus. It does include the trailer, 
It has both a 2.0 mix, which I assume is a, a lossy version of what's on the LD, and most importantly, it has that 5.1 AC3. This is also uh, anamorphically enhanced, so you can watch this on a modern display and you don't have to worry about it being letterboxed and not, uh, you know, non anamorphic letterboxed. But anyway, this is the easiest and best way to actually listen to the original groundbreaking CDS 5.1 mix. It is really well done. Uh, the balance, I think, is is best overall. There are much greater T2 nerds than, than me who know all the intricate differences and can tell you in two seconds which mix you're listening to. But basically, after the CDS mix, you have the home versions. And after this point, every time they reissued the film, they would tweak the film in terms of the audio mix, and they would change things and add things um, and play around with the levels and the EQ. And basically, each time they went to the well, it just got further and further away from from the original design. So if you've never had the opportunity to listen to it this way, I still think this is the best sounding version of T2. It has nice aggression to it, but it doesn't uh, go overboard. And also the balance overall between channels, EQ, uh, effects levels, music levels, I think is best here. I think every mix uh, on the successive releases really is a further step away and actually not as good, I don't think. Um, but again, this is a really fantastic sounding disc and really essential to have if you're a big fan of the film or of cinema audio in general because this, like Jurassic Park, is one of the big titles uh, of the digital sound era, especially at the beginning. And it's amazing we can actually enjoy this mix on disc. Um, but again, if you're just going back and forth between this and uh, the you know older LDs and you know the, the stuff before they really started playing around it, with it further on the later DVDs and Blu-rays, you're probably not going to notice a whole lot of stuff unless you have a pretty good system set up and you're literally doing direct comparisons back and forth. Uh, because I think overall, when you put this on, you can tell the difference in a 5.1 environment compared to the later releases and even the uh, non-discrete versions on the LaserDisc. So I still think this is the best sounding version overall, and this is how you listen to the intended 5.1 theatrical mix. It was only heard on the 70 millimeter releases uh, with the CDS system implemented, and of course that meant when it was actually working. <laughs> then we keep on into the DVDs, so in 2000, a couple years later, we got the Ultimate Edition, which has a number of different packaging varieties. I don't have the fancy slip case for this, but this is still a nice looking DVD package. It's in the uh, double silver case, uh, a double opening case, I should say, that uh, Artisan also used for other releases like their um, special edition of the doors, for example. So, of course, opens like this. You get a nice, pretty thick booklet. This release had a number of new extras, plus it brought over the vintage making of documentary from the theatrical cut Laserdisc box. So this is where we got some new extras added in, a uh, brand new transfer. It includes both versions, so this will get you the special edition as well. However, the audio has been remastered again, and so we now have a new mix in both Dolby Digital 5.1 EX and DTS 5.1 ES. Those are the two systems with uh, rear center matrixed or discrete information. This was developed in 1999 and 2000 by both companies, first for uh, cinemas that installed it, and then of course films that actually used the process in terms of their sound mixers, and then of course it carried over into the home environment on DVD where it would either be uh, dis the a handful were discrete in the DTS ES uh, variant but uh, otherwise it would be matrixed in there and you'd flip the flag on your uh, the switch on your receiver to engage it if it wasn't encoded with a flag on the disc to automatically do it for you. However, all this information, because it's in the rear uh, uh, surrounds anyway, uh, if you don't have that ability, if your speakers are perfectly equidistant, you'll still be able to hear that information behind you. Now, I will say this still sounds pretty good, but it is not the CDS of the previous DVD. The uh, balance isn't quite as good, and they do play around with some things. But it, again, it still sounds good. It's just, again, different, so it's not you know completely theatrically accurate. But this is you know the first step they tried with modern tools and would only continue to tweak it further here and there. 
but uh, this is where some new extras came in, and so this is why I've got this. I, I started getting all the various versions because I wanted to try and compile and make sure I had all the various extras. And this is still dirt cheap. I mean, most of my T2s, uh, you know, didn't cost me more than a dollar. You know, ex excepting the box sets on LD uh, that and uh, the the Blu-ray, like this one, cost me I think 50 cents. You can find the various Terminator 2 DVDs for literally nothing. So then we move on a little bit further and get even more confusing. So this is 2003, where we get the Extreme DVD package, which again has multiple versions. I don't have the, the fancy slipcase, but uh, this is optimized further. It's a new 1080p HD master. So I think this may be the start of the stuff that started turning up on HDTV airings and then the eventual first couple Blu-rays. And what's of course quirky about this, as it proudly proclaims, you can actually watch an early HD version. Uh, it is encoded especially on the disc with your, uh, you know, you stick it in your PC and you can use Windows Media Player to access a 1080p version of the film, or at least I should say, and um, I can't remember the actual resolution of this. I don't know if it's 720p or 1080i or something, but this is when a handful of things would start trying to do stuff like this. It has 5.1 EX audio. It drops the DTS uh, ES from the previous release, so you will have to have that for the DTS ES version. I think this is the same 5.1 EX track that's from the previous disc. I, I can't be 100% certain, but it sounds pretty much the same. Uh, the custom art is pretty nice. You get another booklet, and you get both cuts of the film as well. There are some extras. I don't think it carries over everything from the previous DVD, and I think one or two of these are actually new So, and were introduced on this release. So this is another version you've got to have. And, of course, you can, if you can find some way to access it, there is a quasi-HD version of this here uh, included in this. But, again, I don't know if it's actually accessible now that all this stuff is this old. So after this point, we jump over into the HD realm, and we were confronted with the Skynet Edition Blu-ray, which, again, I think is is using this, this same master, but was hit with additional layers of digital noise reduction and has had further audio remixing into the then newer techniques that we're getting into 6.1 and 7.1 territory. So that has been reissued several times. It does have a pretty good extras package, but it doesn't have 100% of everything from both DVD special editions and everything from the Laserdisc box sets, and of course, not the Guns N' Roses music video. So uh, there was a pretty decent outcry over the issues with that release. They did it several different ways. There are many different packaging versions. And then finally, in 2015, we got a very slimmed down package, literally going down to a single disc, and we got the 2015 Blu-ray. So this takes that master and uh, doesn't have the same levels of digital noise reduction applied to it. This has a nice extras package. It has both cuts of the film. It has 5.1 audio. It has additional audio mixes as well. It even has a DTS Headphone X version, uh, which if, if you like that sort of thing. What's great about this, it distills everything down to a single disc, inexpensive package. It has a good portion, if not most, of all the old legacy extras. It has a version of the audio for both cuts of the film in 5.1 lossless DTS HDMA audio. It sounds good. I don't think it sounds as good as the CDS for the theatrical cut. And again, I do still kind of prefer the uh, Laserdisc mix for the special edition. But all, that, all those quibbles aside, if you want one version of the film that has pretty good color timing, doesn't have the same crazy levels of DNR to it, has a good portion of the extras and both cuts, this is what you need to get. It is frequently on sale for $5 or less. You can buy it used for even less. Um, if you just want a version of Terminator 2, you want the best overall version, this is what you want to go for. Uh, after this, they came out with the aforementioned UHD. It's based off of the old 3D conversion. It is just not pretty to look at. The sound has been remixed further. I think it's absolutely a deplorable disc. And on top of that, it has its own particular color timing, which is not theatrically accurate. So in every single way, the Blu-ray is much better. And when I got this, it, it was on sale, and so was the UHD. And I actually had to pay a dollar more to get the Blu-ray. I didn't think I bought this for about $6, and the UHD was on sale for $5. And I'm like... um, 
no, I'm <laughs> just I'm not even going to bother. I'm going to buy the 2015 disc. So this is the one you want to find. The way to tell it apart from the other versions, of course, you want to look for the 2015 date on the bottom, and also some version of the theatrical motorbike art is on the front here. And it does include a digital copy, which I'm sure is probably expired by now. But if it's not, if you like that sort of thing, that's included. Um, but this is the one you want to go for. This is still currently the best version of the film on disc in terms of the modern specs and picture resolution. So if you want to start somewhere or you just want a copy of the film, this is what you want. You want the 2015 Lionsgate Blu-ray. This will get you most everything. But, of course, what you should supplement it with and what T2 fans should own, at least if not the Laserdisc, some version of the original DVD with the CTS 5.1 audio. Again, this is still the best sounding T2 out there. This is what you want to find. If you find this in a bargain bin anywhere, uh, there are multiple versions. So it's either this way or in a keep case. You want to look for this cover image from the original poster with the sort of metallic background that mimics the old theatrical cut Laserdisc box set. So having these two, you're pretty solid. But of course, if you want absolutely every last extra, you need to get both of the previous DVDs and you also need to get, at the very least, the Laserdisc Special Edition box set to get the Guns N' Roses music video. And of course, I like the mix for the Special Edition on Laserdisc best. And if you get into Laserdisc, I'd also recommend getting the theatrical cut box, which has a, a better transfer than the Special Edition, has the 2.0 theatrical audio and the making up documentary on LD, even though the vintage making up documentary here is eventually carried over to some of the DVDs and Blu-rays. So that's why I've got so many T2s. That's what my collection looks like. I never intended to get this many, but I just wanted to make sure I got every extra and got some of the cool Laserdisc box sets, and then it just sort of spiraled out of control, as all Cameron films do. So that's it for my Terminator 2 collection. I hope that explained why I have so many darn copies of T2. Uh, it is very cheap to do. So honestly, if you're interested in any of this stuff or you're a fan of the film, there's really no reason to not at least have a couple different Terminator 2s uh, and if you want to get every single extra, you're going to have to do that anyway. But basically, I think the 2015 Blu-ray is the way to go still. Uh, it's, it's a shame that you're still having to deal with a compromised bastard, and that's the best you can do. But in terms of the disc itself, it doesn't have as much DNR. The encoding's better than the previous Blu-rays. It has a version of the audio that's at least a little bit closer to how it was. It has most of the extras, and it has both cuts of the film. So uh, I think it's about the best you can do. But I would say supplement it with the uh, either the first DVD or the last laser disc here in the U.S. to get that really great and important CDS audio track in Discrete 5.1, which is still, I think, the best sounding T2 there is. And then if you want to go down the rabbit hole further, I'd say go into Laserdisc, where Cameron Films really are at their strongest. And uh, what's really crazy is it, that's still the best way to watch a number of Cameron Films. You know, True Lies and the Abyss are still stuck in that era of transfer in terms of their only DVD release being a port of their Laserdisc. And, uh, of course, the Abyss has the two different cuts. It has the really great special edition box set, the AC3 reissue the four to three versions, which I have most of those. And uh, True Lies has is probably best on the DTS Laserdisc, which I have a copy of, um, but unfortunately still has the same problematic video transfer that was ported to the DVD. Uh, at least True Lies got released on the D Theater format in 1080i, uh, which I believe T2 did as well. But with T2, you do have, uh, you know, versions on Blu-ray and actual 1080p, whereas True Lies, that never happened. But uh, I do think the DTS Laserdisc for True Lies is the best sounding version floating around, uh, or at least officially available. But uh, it's, it's a shame we're having to do this with, with films that are very popular, very well known. They made tons of money, so it shouldn't be that way. But, of course, uh, with Cameron films, you're just stuck with constant revisionism, uh, a, a apparent mania for destroying film grain, <laughs> trying to make them look and sound like uh, you know, completely different films to their original release versions. So if you like these films or if this stuff interests you, you wind up having to hang on to various versions. And saying all this... You know, the same goes for Terminator 1, which is why, as you can see, I have, you know, multiple copies behind me. And um, you know what? Why not? I can go over those real quick. 
So to start with LD really quick, uh, there were you know a number of pan and scan or four to three versions. I should say should say opened up uh, because of course this film was not scope. It was 185 spherical and a much lower budget, hence it had a mono mix. So this is actually probably the rarest version in the U.S. on Laserdisc. It's not the earliest, but it's it's in the middle from 1989. This is the Image 4 to 3 release, also with an HBO video credit and Image's you know typical style of jacket. Uh, it has digital sound. It's not the best transfer in the world. It's definitely blown away by the later versions, but this one is exceptionally uncommon. Um, I just picked it up on a whim because it was perfect and only cost me a quarter, but uh, this is actually very expensive on the used market, again, simply because of the rarity, but this is not the version you'll want to get to watch and enjoy from a uh, theatrical accuracy perspective, but it is a cool variant to have and very, very uncommon. There are two letterbox versions on Laserdisc, and this is where you really want to focus your search. So first is the Hemdale, uh, released by Image, uh, early 90s letterbox pressing with the theatrical art. This is apparent. it seems to be based off of a release print. It does have cue changeovers. It's a bit uh, dirtier and grungier in terms of the print quality and the color timing. It does have the theatrical mono mix, which sounds nice and punchy on here, but obviously like the transfer of the picture element isn't you know super cleaned up. It's not a studio source, um, but it's still well done. This was the first time you had a proper version of this film to watch and enjoy on any format. And as with all these, all this stuff carried over onto VHS usually getting pan and scanned in the process but if you want the warts and all sort of I mean it's not really a grindhouse presentation but like if you want like the midnight movie experience like if you went to an art house and they got an original uh, print that you know just was in pretty decent shape and projected it that's what this is going to most resemble so it's still a nice presentation however it was outdone a couple years later by the THX supervised widescreen edition reissue. This was apparently based off an interpositive, much cleaner, much more balanced color timing. It has the mono and the mono is perfectly clean. Um, this and the first DVD that ported this are probably the best ways to experience the mono. This is a, a, a phenomenal laser disc pressing. This, this is one of those you watch and you forget it's a laser disc until you hit the side change. It's almost DVD in quality. Uh, it is really, you could use this as a reference grade test disc in a lot of ways. Uh, just a really fantastic disc overall, uh, but the art is the same as the previous one. So if you just wanted one LD copy, uh, you'd want to grab this one. So as I said, they did port it over to DVD like uh, T2 had the same thing happen. So the original Hemdale snapper case looks like this. Exact same art. Um, pretty nice glossy sleeve, which wasn't always common on snapper cases. Uh, it has the mono, but it has been knocked down to Dolby Digital. So it is lossy as compared to the lossless PCM on the Laserdisc. Very standard case, very plain, but there's your chapter stops. But that's what this one looks like, and it is definitely the hardest version of uh, Terminator 1 to get on DVD, but it is a port of that Laserdisc Master. I can't remember, I also think this one is, of course, non anamorphic because it's an early DVD, uh, so it is literally a Laserdisc port. Then in 2003, uh, like their Mad Max reissue, uh, MGM decided to do a spiffed up special edition with a new transfer. It came with art like this. So this had some new extras plus some old ones. Uh, it includes you know, a, a new documentary and everything. But in terms of the audio, it still has the original mono, which sounds pretty darn good, actually. But it, in, it introduces the new 5.1 EX remix, which was done from the ground up. Uh, they did mono originally because the budget didn't spring for Dolby Stereo or they decided to focus more on the effects work and Cameron has regretted it ever since and now after this point the mono disappears. However, the new remix, while technically superior, is completely inferior in every way. It alters the character of many scenes. It does not fit with the 1984 production. Uh, the original mono mix is perfect. It's one of the great mono mixes because it is very late for mono. It's, it's full of you know, um, gunfire and various effects and things. And it's really effective. And that's how the film was originally mixed and intended to be experienced. So while they, it's nice they got to go back and do a mix that was more in line with their modern thinking, it is not the way to watch the film. And it's one of the most obvious cases where the original mono is the preferred way to go. But as I said, after this point, it disappeared. So if you want to hear the mono and you want it on disc, this is the easiest way to get it. You can still get this release for very cheap. 
Uh, it, it Because it's packed with extras, just like their Mad Max disc, they didn't spring for two discs, so it is, unfortunately, a flipper disc. But you do get a nice insert. And again, it is anamorphic, whereas the old DVD, I'm pretty sure, is not. Uh, it also came with a slip case, which I don't have, so there are variants of this. But uh, if you get this, just make sure it says mono on the back, and it should look like this. They did carry this over into the initial Blu-ray release, which I have here. So same art, same transfer, but this time in 1080p. It is obviously an older master, but, you know, it, it, it's held up pretty well. It doesn't have the color timing issues of the new master. However, even though it brings over, I believe it brings over some, but not all of the extras on here. But the more important thing is this only has the 5.1 mix. Uh, this time it's encoded lossless PCM, but they left off the original mono mix. So... I, I can't really watch this or really any version of on Blu-ray of the official releases because it only has the ungodly awful 5.1 remix. So if you get this, it's just because you want this master and HD or you want a full PCM uncompressed version of the 5.1 5, uh, such a 5.1 EX mix. Then we get to what's currently in print, which is the new 4K mastered scan, released a number of different ways. I have it here with the revised art in a blood red Blu-ray case, which looks pretty nice, and you can get this for very, very cheap. I believe this has, it's got some of the extras from the MGM disc. I uh, don't think it's got all of them though, so again, some things are still exclusive to the DVD. However, we get, once again, the 5.1 remix as uncompressed PCM. You get, at least in this version, there's a couple art cards included, the new art on a disc. Again, there are multiple different packaging variants of this, but it's the same disc contents. But in terms of the master, it's a beautiful new scam with fine detail that is nowhere to be found on the old releases. So that's great. But it's been hit with a complete modern color grading that is full of the dreaded teal coloring that a lot of people like to go on and on about in terms of debating it. But it's definitely here. It should not be there. And it ruins what is otherwise a great scan. So while this has a beautiful new source scan, in terms of the experience, you're much better off with the old master on this disc, and neither one has the all-important original mono, which to even get a copy of, and one that sounds pretty good, you have to go all the way back to the MGM disc, which again, this DVD has more extras, well, it should say all the ones that were created for this film are here. So at the very least, you've got to have one of the Blu-rays plus the DVD. And if you want the full experience, I think you really need to do yourself a favor and grab a copy at least of the THX uh, signed off on uh, Letterbox Laserdisc reissue from, I think this is from 1995. Yeah, 95. So there you have it. And it doesn't have to be this way. There is no reason why this new master couldn't have proper color timing, proper grain structure intact, and have the original mono mix, plus the handful of bits of the DVD extras that weren't included. So this one is just, they didn't want it, or they, and, or, the, or people were too lazy to make sure all the extras were carried over, and it seems like it is like an edict to never have the mono mix again post the DVD. So um, it's a bit less convoluted than T2. There are, of course, many repackages just like that film. But in terms of overall editions, if you want everything Terminator 1 related and you want all the best stuff, you pretty much have to have the new Blu-ray, just have the new master with crappy audio and crappy color timing, then the old master in HD, but without the mono, without all the extras. The DVD for all the extras and the mono. And then, of course, going back to either the first DVD or the Laserdisc for probably the best sounding mono overall. So that's my overall uh, Terminator 1 and 2 video collection, why I have so many different editions, and a very Cliff Notes uh, run through of the various quirks of all the versions on DVD, Blu ray, and Laserdisc. What you're looking at if you're trying to get you know all the various extras and audio mixes and just figure out the whole uh, terminator scenario for the first two original films on disc and unfortunately you really do need a mix of things because not everything is carried over the original audio has not carried over uh, there are color timing issues here and there so 
uh, again, with every Cameron film, you go through this stuff. And uh, at least with Terminator 1 and 2, you can compile all these different b- releases and you can get everything together. Whereas the other films, especially the ones without Blu-ray releases, you can't do that. Um, so it's possible. And very, very fortunately, all this stuff is very cheap. The, again, what you'll have to pay most for uh, if you're willing to dig through bargain bins and, and record stores and, and various places, you can pretty much find all the DVDs and Blu-rays for very cheap. What's going to set you back a little bit is the big heavy Laserdisc special edition box sets, which uh, honestly shouldn't cost you more than 10 to $20 plus shipping. But again, trying to find one complete in good shape, you'll probably pay a little bit more than that. But just be patient. It is doable. And you know, I was able to put all this together for very very little money and honestly it's it's very worth it because you learn a lot you you get to experience the film in different ways and be become more acquainted with it and its production history and see how things were done and see the video history just unfold in front of your eyes so i i think this stuff is beyond interesting and uh, beyond informative but uh, it is getting into very nerdy territory so i do readily admit that so again if you want just the bare essential best versions to have of these films it, it, I'll, I'll i'll just say if you don't want to get into the laser disc realm and you just want to do it simply and and get the best overall for t2 i think you need the 2015 blu-ray plus the original DVD for the CDS audio track. And then for Terminator 1, you know, you can have the new version if you want the new master, even though it's got the dodgy color timing and or the original Blu-ray release. But at the very least, go get yourself a copy of the MGM DVD so you can at least have all the extras in one place plus the original mono. And then you can go into the Laserdisc territory if you want to or if you have a working player, which I know is not an easy thing to do these days. But uh, that's where it stands for both films. These are the releases you're going to want to uh, add to your collection. So as always, thank you ever so much for listening to my babbles. I hope this has been at least somewhat fun and informative. Uh, it's it's much more convoluted than you'd ever think. And again, this is without me getting into all the uh, Japanese laser discs and the other various foreign releases, which is basically a, a whole other video, which uh, I've, I've never owned any of those, so I can only guess and uh, talk about things that other people have said and forums and things. But uh, in, in terms of the way it is on the U.S. home video market, these are the additions you're going to be looking for and looking at so and as always thank you ever so much for watching and you know at least we're past judgment day now right